dense embedding that you're using in your rack pipelines have a critical flaw, which probably is impacting the accuracy of your retrieval. In this video, we will look at what this potential issue is and what is the potential solution. In order to explain this, let's look at a very simple example. So here I have three documents. Each one of them contains a single sentence. On the right hand side, we have a query. We compute the embeddings of our documents or chunks. And depending on the uh, embedding model that we choose, we will get a vector uh, for each of this chunk. Similarly, for the query, we will also get a vector. And then we do similarity search. So basically, we compare this embedding vector with each of the documents embedding vector and figure out which one is the closest. And that is return as a result of our retrieval step. If you look here, there are different embedding models and each one of them have a different dimensions. One of the most widely used open source embedding model is this BGE small, which has only 384 dimensions. And more recently, we have started seeing much larger dimensional embeddings when it comes to open source embedding models. Now you might be thinking, what is the issue with embeddings? So let's assume instead of this single sentence, your chunk contains multiple paragraphs because you have a much larger chunk size. In that case, if you're computing embeddings for your chunk, you're going to be compressing all that information into a single vector. That vector may not be able to represent everything that is present in a given chunk. In this case, the compression is basically loss of a lot of information. So what's the solution? A potential solution is in this paper, Colbert V2, effective and efficient retrieval via lightweight late interaction. And we're going to look at a practical code example later in the video. Now, this is a dense paper, but let me try to explain the concepts with a very simple example. So coming back to this, with dense embeddings that we usually use, we are representing a whole chunk with a single embedding vector. But Colbert or Colbert suggest a different techniques. In this case, the Col is contextualized late interaction. And let me explain what it means. The first step in this case is that both for our documents and chunks, as well as for a query, we tokenize it. That means depending on the tokenizer that we use, we are going to get individual tokens from our documents. So in this case, uh, let's say our first document contains five different tokens. The second document also has five different tokens. The third document has six tokens. And similarly, we extract the individual tokens for our query as well. In the next step, we compute embeddings for each and every individual token. So every token is going to be represented by a different embedding vector. Just keep in mind, this is a very simplified explanation of how uh, this algorithm works. I'm skipping on a lot of technical details. But now for each of the document as well as query, we are going to have a number of different embedding vectors depending on how many tokens are in each document. Next, for each token in the query, we will compute a similarity score with each token uh, in your document. So for example, uh, for the first token in the query, we compute similarity among all the tokens that are present in the first document. Then we repeat this whole uh, process for the second documents as well for the third document. And we do this for each and every individual query token. And then based on these individual similarity scores, we compute an overall score for each document or each chunk. These are called late interactions, which are shown here in this figure in the paper. Now, in this case, each token individually is contributing to the overall score rather than everything being compressed into a single vector. The embeddings that you get for each of these tokens are actually contextualized. So depending on the overall context in which this token is present, that is taken into account when uh, the embeddings are computed. Okay, so I hope uh, this makes sense. Uh, for more details, I will highly recommend to check out the paper. I'll put a link to this paper in the video description. Now, let's look at a practical example of how you can do semantic search 
using Colbert instead of the dense embedding models. There's a GitHub repo for Colbert v2, but instead of this, we are going to use another package. This is called Regatui. So this is um, built on top of Colbert. Here they show you how you can train and fine tune Colbert models, use it for embedding and indexing documents, uh, and there are examples of retraining documents as well. I highly recommend to check this out. So I put together this Google Colab uh, for you. The link is going to be in the video description. First, we need to install different packages that are going to be needed. For this example, we're going to be working with the Orca paper for retrieval. Here, you can download this paper if you want, but in my case, I uploaded a copy of this paper uh, to my Google Colab notebook. Now, in this case, to load the PDF file, I'm using the PDF reader from Llama Index. So basically here is our PDF file after reading it as a document. Next, instead of using the documents objects from Llama Index, we are extracting uh, the original text from each of those document objects. But now this is basically uh, a list of text. And a, a simple text is a lot easier to work with in Ragatui. All right, next we will import the uh, pre-trained model from Ragatui. There are a couple of versions of Colbert. We're going to be using the second version. Uh, so this will basically load a Ragatui rag pipeline. Now you will see this warning message regarding hugging face token, but you don't actually need it. Next, we need to create our index. This is very similar to uh, what you would do if you are building a vector DB. So we need to provide a list of documents, and this is basically the list of text. Then you need to give a name to your index. I'm just calling this Orca. Then maximum documents length. Think about this as the chunk size. So you want to define uh, the maximum document length here. I'm keeping it to 256. And whether we want to split individual documents based on this max document length or not. And I said yes. So by default, as a vector store, it's using plate, but you can force it to use files if you want. Okay, so what exactly is happening in here? So basically it divided our text into 219 passages. And for each of the tokens, it will uh, compute this embedding representation. Now, in order to do retrieval, all you need to do is, now in order to do retrieval, we're going to use the search function on top of our index that we just created. We'll pass on our query, then the number of uh, documents that we want it to return and then the name of the index that we want to use. So you can have multiple indices. Uh, in this case, we have only one index and we are just using that. Now the output um, is actually a little different from what you would expect from a normal vector store. Now the result that you get has multiple components. First, you get the uh, document or chunk that is retrieved, but along with that, you also get the score as a rank and you get uh, some document specific information for example passage id document id that is uh, used for internal indexing now in this case if you look at this rank this is extremely important because it ranks documents based on the similarity to your query okay so here i'm representing the same information but in a much better formatted way so our query here was what is instruction tuning and in this case, the first document that it returned has a subtitle of, title of instruction tuning. So this portion of the paper actually talks about instruction tuning. The second document that it returned also talks about instruction tuning for multimodal tasks. The third document that it returned also talks about instruction tuning specifically with GPT-4 responses. So if you were to do RAG on top of this, you're going to use these three documents as context to your LLM along with your uh, query. Okay, now the question is going to be, how does this retrieval compares to uh, dense embedding models? For that, we are going to be using LangChain. So I'm installing all the required packages. Now I want to do a comparison of Colbert with the OpenAI embedding model, as well as one of the open source embedding model. Now, in this case, uh, we're just setting up things. So we import all the required packages. 
uh, then I'm using uh, OpenAI, so I need to provide my OpenAI API key. Uh, since this is lang chain, so I need to just um, reload the paper again. Embedding model that we're going to be using is the OpenAI embedding model. I put everything together in a single text. Now here, I'm using the GPT-4 tokenizer. And again, the chunk size is going to be 256. So I want to keep it as similar to what we had uh, for Colbert model. But keep in mind that the chunks that you get are not going to be exactly the same because the tokenizer is different in this case. Now we're using files uh, as a vector DB or vector star. And uh, we're going to run the same uh, query, what is instruction tuning. And here are the results. So the first chunk that it returned is exactly the same as uh, what we saw before. So this is pretty good. The second chunk also talks about instruction tuning. So, so far so good. But when we look at the third uh, chunk, this is where the problem lies. There is instruction tuning in here, but this is basically the table of contents. Now, in this case, I returned four documents. And the last one also talks about instruction tuning as well. So if we were to generate a response based on this context, all of this is going to go in to our LLM and that is going to generate a response. But in here, you can see that there is one chunk uh, which has relatively irrelevant information and that could cause some issues. Now let's look at how the results looks for the open source embedding model. In this case, I'm using the BGE small English. I wrote this function to load the embedding model, but again, I'm keeping the chunk size uh, to 256 tokens. So we split everything based on uh, the tokenizer that we have for BGE small. Here we load the embedding model, then compute the embeddings, put them in a vector store, and we run it through the exact same query. Okay, so here's the response. The first chunk that it returns is again the table of content. There is instruction tuning at the top, but there are irrelevant uh, things in here, which is not helpful at all. The second chunk does talk about instruction tuning. Uh, the third chunk also has some information regarding instruction tuning and um, also the fourth chunk. Now, as you can see um, in this specific example, the cobert is retrieving uh, I think much better context uh, that we can pass on to our LLM. Now, if you recall from our initial discussion, uh, depending on the size of the embedding model, it probably is going to start having more uh, trouble if we increase the chunk size. So in this case, um, I'm looking at a relatively complex query. Uh, we increase the uh, max document length to 512 tokens, and uh, this is for the Colbert v2. The query in this case is what is a system message and list all the system messages in the paper. So again, uh, it actually needs to uh, divide it into kind of two questions because we're looking at uh, two different things. In this case, it's able to retrieve the first chunk which actually talks about uh, what a system message is. So this is pretty good. For example, here it says uh, system instructions can specify the tone, task, format, and limitation of model responses. And system instructions are also a way of improving the safety of the model responses, right? So the first chunk is relevant to our first part of the question. Now, the second chunk actually talks about system messages uh, that, that are proposed within the paper. So there are a total of uh, 16 different system messages. But since we uh, define max uh, document length of 512, so it was able to retrieve only 13 or uh, 12 and a half of those system messages as a part of the second document. Now the third document is a table uh, which actually talks about the performance based on different system messages. And the last document that it retrieved has the remaining uh, system messages that are present in the paper. Now here, uh, one thing uh, probably that needs to be done is to improve the quality of chunking process. The great thing is this is integrated within Langchain. So let me know if you want me to uh, create another video of how to use this as part of Langchain. So the responses are not bad at all because the first two chunks contains the exact information that we are looking for. 
Now let's look at the OpenAI embedding model. Uh, in this case, the first chunk that it retrieved uh, actually lists some of the system messages that are proposed in the paper. The second passage or document, again, for some reason, retrieved a table of content. Now the third uh, document or chunk that it retrieves, it talks about the definition of system instruction or system message. So this is pretty good. And the last chunk talks about role of system instructions. All right, what about the open source embedding model? So this one has the most trouble. So the first chunk is actually partial list of the system messages that are proposed in the paper. The second document is basically a combination of a figure, caption, and a, a table in the paper. Now the third one has a partial definition of system instruction but the rest of the chunk talks about something else. The fourth one is not really relevant to the query uh, whatsoever. It simply mentions system message and it picked this whole paragraph or whole document based on that. Now, as you can see, Colbert can potentially give you better context uh, when it comes to retrieval and that context will be helpful uh, to the LLM to generate a much better response. Okay, so I highly recommend to check it out I don't think a lot of people are using this, but it has extremely high potential. Now, before we leave, a couple of things. So first and foremost, the accuracy of retrieval also depends on uh, how big your embedding model is. So for example, if uh, you were to use something like this SFR embedding Mistral, this probably is going to give you a much better retrieval accuracy because it has a much better embedding size. And I think that's the reason since the OpenAI embedding models have much bigger size and they are much bigger models in general. That's why we were able to see like closer retrieved text both from the Colbert and from the OpenAI embedding model. I think by default we were using the small embedding model from OpenAI which still has a dimension of uh, 1536 vectors. Again, I think uh, Regatui has um, a lot of potential. Let me know if you want me to make subsequent videos in integrating this as a part of end-to-end uh, -end rack pipeline. If you want to learn more about advanced rack concepts, make sure to sign up uh, for my advanced rack course. Link is in the description. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.